The first session is about signatures. We have two talks in this session. The first talk is about round optimal blind signatures. It's given by Sanjam Gerg, Benishir Rao, Amit Sahai, Dominic Shred, Dominic Unlu. Uh, Sanjam and Dominic will give a talk together. Thank you very much. This paper, as it says, is about round optimal blind signatures. We are asking the very fundamental question if we can build a scheme with just two moves in the standard model without any setup assumptions or random oracles. Um, the presentation here is based uh, basically on two papers. The first one was by Sanjam, Banishri, and Amit. Unfortunately, they had a similar idea and submitted it to the same conference. Um, and we had a similar idea together with Dominic Unruh. Our submitted version you can find on uh, ePrint under this URL. So blind signatures were invented in 1985 by, by David Chaum, and the basic idea is that we have an interactive protocol between two parties, a user who wants to get a signature and the signer who wants to issue signatures. And they are blind in the sense that the signer does not see what he's signing. But on the other hand, the signer wants to be some kind of, wants to have some kind of security, and this is called unfortunability. It roughly says that the user cannot produce more signatures than the number of interactions. So how does our solution work? It basically works as follows. The user sends an envelope, a carbon copy envelope. The signer then signs it. The signature goes through the envelope on the message. The user can then recover the message out of the envelope and can output the signature. Since the envelope um, hides the message completely, the signer does not see what he's signing. On the other hand, the user cannot, cannot um, copy the signature to another document. So what are the applications of blind signatures? Well, we have many, many applications. The motivating application was, um, was eCash, where the user wants to, to, get rent, to get coins from the bank. And eCash um, gets more and more popular now. I've heard that um, Microsoft Research is actively working on it. The next application is, is voting. Here the idea is that the user cannot vote for several candidates, so he cannot sell the, its vote uh, to, to vote for several candidates. And on the other hand, the voting agency doesn't see um, for which person I am voting for. And here we have a real-world application. In 2002, the FIFA selected the most valuable player in the, in the FIFA World Soccer Cup using Votopia, and Votopia actually used the blind signature scheme. Blind signatures are also used in, anon in anonymous credentials. For example, Microsoft just recently launched um, Uproof. You, if you Google it, you find it, and they're using as a building block blind signatures as well. And also the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace, they are also working on anonymous credentials and hopefully they will use blind signatures as well. So what are, what are we going to talk about? Now that you know the, the main idea, of course, first we have to precisely say what, what does the security mean. We then will discuss our contribution and state why this problem was important and um, we try to explain why it was open for, for so long. To do this, I will go more and more into the lab related work and just point the main, main important um, papers. If I forgot yours, please apologize. And then Sanjam will take over and will we'll discuss the idea of um, the joint construction. And as you might know, last year at last Eurocrypt, Mark Fischlin and I had an impossibility result for three move blind signatures, and he will discuss why we don't, uh, he will discuss the relation. So if we look at regular signature schemes, then the unfortunability is easily defined, right? You have an oracle, you can query this oracle, and if you manage to output a fresh message and a valid signature, then you win. But here in the, in the case of blind signatures, it's more difficult because we actually don't see the messages. So we give the user the public key and we let him interact with the signing oracle as many times as he wishes. And now we say the user wins if it manages to, to compute one more message signature pair, which means after n, after n queries, 
he has to compute n plus one message signature pairs, they must verify, and all messages must be distinct. The basic idea is that if at least one, if, if, um, if he managed to compute one more signature, then at least one should be fresh. Blindness, um, as I said before, says that the user, uh, that the signer cannot really see the message that he's signing. So this is defined in the usual, in the usual um, indistinguishability game. We first flip, flip a bit. The signer then outputs a maliciously generated public key, maybe not, but uh, he could do so, and two messages. Then two user instances are executed on, on the message and the maliciously public key. And now the adversary completely schedules um, the interaction of a protocol, and the user has now tried to compute the signature. If both signatures verify, then they are given to the signer, and otherwise he receives bot bot. And he then tries to predict the bit B. Observe that here in this definition, we're not really taking aborts into account. So if some party aborts, then the signer is not informed which one. Even if the protocol takes 10 rounds, if it stops after the first round, this is here not considered. But it's considered in a stronger definition that we also um, took a look at at PKC. So again, let us come back to the very fundamental and easy question. Can we build a blind signature scheme with two moves in the standard model? To see why this could be, could be difficult, we look back at, at the construction that we know. Over 18 papers have now been published. And the first one it was the one by Schaum, which is based on an RSA variant. And also, Baldi Reva managed to construct a scheme with two moves. Unfortunately, both schemes rely on an interactive assumption where I give you an additional oracle that could help you, and they all both need the random oracle. Okay, if we add, ah, and of course, the, if we are willing to, to allow a trusted setup like the CRS, then we can do it with two moves as well. What happens if we add one round? Well, the situation is slightly better. The beautiful schemes by Porschemal and Stern or by Abi only need the random oracle and, not, and, and of course, some, some computational assumptions. Okay, what happens if we add one more round? In 2006, in 2006, Okamoto found the first scheme in the standard model with four moves. So even after 80, public, even after 80 papers that, of course, not every paper focused on the round complexity, but when you construct an interactive protocol, you really want to, to have a low round complexity. Okay, we want to reduce the number of rounds. What can we do? The obvious thing is um, reduce the, the number of rounds of a known scheme. We have no idea how this works. Okay, so can we prove one of the, of the schemes that have to move without the random oracle or without um, the intactive assumption? This could be possible. Or we construct a completely new scheme. Okay, what's... What's, what's with this two round moves that we know? Well, this slide I showed at Eurocrypt last year, and I exactly stated that, that um, they simply don't exist in the standard model. So where's the contra contradiction? Well, of course, this was a motivating slide, and we, we defined a very general class of schemes where um, all known schemes fall into, and we showed that you won't, um, with black box techniques, you won't be able to, to reduce it to a to a non-detective assumption. And this result has been extended by PASS also to unique blind signatures. He did much more, but this was part of it. Okay, so the simple question remains, what about two moves in the standard model? Sanjam will now um, explain the, the idea of the construction. Of course, the construction is a bit difficult. That's why please take it as the idea and look for the actual construction in the proceedings. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks to Nick for the great uh, introduction. Uh, I'll quickly, uh, without wasting time, get to the construction. So the idea is uh, going to be to use general techniques from secure multi-party computation and to adopt them to the setting of uh, blind signatures. So we know that uh, Yao's garble uh, circuit construction uh, allows us to evaluate any uh, uh, circuit privately uh, and securely. 
and uh, we want to use it to, to do uh, blind signatures. So it would be natural to consider uh, allowing for evaluation of a uh, signing uh, function uh, in this manner. Uh, in addition to Yaw's garble circuit, for this to work, we need a two-round OT protocol. But uh, uh, we do not know of fully simulatable uh, OT protocols, which, uh, which, are just, which can be implemented in just two rounds. However, we know two-round OT protocols, which, which have some limited security, just like the NORPINCUS or AIR uh, protocol. This, these protocols provide computational security for the sender and statistical security for the receiver. And as we'll see, this would in uh, some sense suffice for our purposes. So uh, we're trying to use Yaw's garble circuit with, with the two-round OT protocol. The user first sends the first message of the OT protocol, and the signer responds with the second message of the OT protocol, along with the Yaw's garble circuit. So now a question to ask is, are we done? Uh, is it already secure? Well, there are certain problems. Yaw's garble circuit construction is only, does only provide semi-honest security. So we cannot directly use it. The second problem is, as I said, OT is not fully simulatable. So that, that has problems with respect to the proof. So uh, we cannot live with semi-honest security, uh, because uh, in, in real life, there is nothing like uh, semi-honest security. We need to make it fully secure. So the question to ask is, what can a cheating signer in this protocol do? So a, a cheating signer, the goal of the cheating signer is to break blindness, as explained by Dominique. And uh, uh, this cheating signer actually can do a lot of bad things. The situation is actually really horrible. Uh, since Yao is only semi-honest, the signer can co encode any arbitrary function uh, and make the user evaluate this arbitrary function on his message rather than actual uh, uh, circuit evaluating the, the signature. The second problem is that the signer can actually manipulate the randomness that is being used in, uh, in the evaluation in the Yao's garble circuit and affect the, the, the randomness used in the signing process, uh, thereby correlating the randomness used in a specific interaction with the signature that uh, the user obtains, ultimating, ultimately leading to uh, total loss of blindness. Let me talk about the second problem first. And actually, as it turns out, it's, it's, it's easy to solve. If the signer use, uses unique signature, then we can uh, solve this problem easily. In fact, it's even easier. Uh, if the signer just uh, uses uh, a pseudo-random function uh, and, and applies it to the message to obtain the random coins being used in the signing operation, then this problem again does not come up because it is, in some sense, essentially making the signature scheme uh, uh, unique. You can do that without uh, relying on specific uh, signature scheme. It can be done for any general signature scheme. The second, the first issue which I point, pointed is that the, the Yao's garble circuit construction only provides semi-honest security. And it, this is, in fact, a more fundamental issue. Uh, and we need to, to a way to get around this and, and, and enforce some way in, and have a way that the, the signer cannot cheat in this uh, protocol. So what we want is that the, the second message of the signer, which is the uh, response to the OT messages, and the Yao's garble circuit construction, they are actually generated using the, the correct algorithm following the, uh, the correct secret key. So uh, in some sense, I in additionally needs to prove the correctness of the messages sent. And the idea is to use a, a proof protocol. Uh, and the immediate question would be, what proof protocol to use? Because uh, uh, we know that standard zero knowledge protocols require three rounds. And uh, uh, we are really constrained in terms of the round complexity. We have only two rounds, and we cannot use a standard zero knowledge protocol. But uh, uh, fortunately for us, uh, we know of uh, a weakened notion of zero knowledge. It's called a super polynomial simulation based zero knowledge, uh, where a prover can prove to a verifier that uh, uh, some, some, some statement is true in just two rounds. So let me now de describe the weakness. The, de the weakness is that for every cheating verifier, the prover can actually argue that uh, there exists a simulator S that actually runs in super polynomial time and can simulate the view of the verifier. <clears throat> so what we have achieved? What we, have achieved we have this protocol. We have the first message from the OT and the first message of zero knowledge protocol and the second response to the OT message and the garble uh, circuit. And additionally, there is a, a, a proof that the OT message and the Yao's garble circuit are correctly uh, formed uh, that's sent along. And, and by this, we have achieved that 
signer uses deterministic signature, so he cannot uh, arbitrarily choose randomness, and we're enforcing correct behavior by a zero knowledge protocol. Uh, so uh, have you solved the problem of cheating sender? Actually, some certain issues still remain. And in the proof of security, uh, in arguing blindness, we need to be able to extract uh, the signatures that are being generated uh, in order to, to, to argue blindness. And for that, we can rely on uh, super polynomial extraction that uh, the protocol, zero knowledge protocol that I just uh, described, already has. However, that can be avoided by using uh, specific rewinding techniques. I'm not going to get into details of that, and you can look at the paper uh, if you like. Uh, the second problem is of unforgeability. We do not want uh, a user to be able to come up, forge signatures on messages that, or, or, uh, more messages than the number of interactions it has with the cheating signer. And, 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 uh, and for, to argue that, we would have to reduce the unforgeability of our scheme to the unforgeability of the underlying signature scheme. However, in doing so, we're going to be relying on a simulator that is going to simulate the view of this uh, cheating user who is, who's forging, for which we're relying on a super polynomial simulator. And that's problematic, uh, but it's actually easy to deal with this problem by assuming that we, are, we have a signature scheme which is secure against adversaries that run in super polynomial time. This is a, a well-known technique called complexity leveraging that we're using here, and it allows us to, to bypass this problem and argue unforgeability and reduce it to the unforgeability of the underlying signature scheme. So as Nick pointed out, uh, they had, a, a, along with Mark Fishlin, he had a result on the impossibility of three-round uh, blind signature schemes. However, in order to make the problem tractable, uh, they restricted themselves to, to blind signature schemes that uh, satisfy some technical property. One of these technical properties is that blindness holds even against uh, uh, a cheating signer who has access to an oracle who can forge signatures on other messages for arbitrary public keys. And our scheme avoids this, uh, this, this, uh, this property, thereby circumventing their impossibility and in, in still achieving full security uh, even in two rounds. So uh, uh, let me conclude finally with uh, some uh, note on the open problems. So uh, our construction requires uh, some hard, uh, 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 some strong assumptions, and it will be a good idea to improve these assumptions. Uh, uh, we specifically rely on sub-exponentially hard one-way functions. We rely on trapdoor permutations. Uh, for construction of NISX in the uh, protocol, and we rely on the DDH uh, assumption for the, for the OT protocol. Uh, in an impossibility result uh, by, uh, in, in, uh, by Katz, uh, uh, Schroeder, and uh, uh, in TCC 2012, they argue that actually trapdoor permutations are necessary for the construction. Finally, I also want to stress that our construction is only a, a, a feasibility result it would be really nice if we can construct constructions which are uh, really efficient and can be useful in practice uh, and then can be done in two rounds. Uh, thanks for my co-authors. Uh, and uh, any questions? We have, we have some time for questions. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, but if you interacted in uh, a hundred interactions already, you have to produce hundred and one signatures on different messages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because we have unique signatures, so that would not be a problem. Okay. Yeah, actually, you also have a. So, uh, this is this is yours. So, this is a definition that is studied by um, Dominic Unger and me. 
The interesting point is we have a transformation that if you add randomness to, to each message, then this is automatically TD applied. So this transformation can easily be adopted to our results as well, independent of the unique signature. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's thank to the speaker again.